Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. So today we're going to be setting up a JB Eliminator vacuum pump for wood stabilizing. This is going to be a pretty quick video, but I just kind of wanted to walk you through, you know, once you unbox this stuff, what is all involved in setting up your pump. So let's get started. this video what I wanted to do is just kind of walk you through you know I just basically pulled this out of the box you know you got a couple of uh, you know manuals uh, instruction things um, it came with uh, some pump oil so that's nice and uh, you know other than that I just kind of wanted to walk you through you know what do you have to do to get this thing set up and then connect to you know it doesn't have to be a turn text chamber necessarily but um, you know connect it to your pump and get things going so uh, let's get this thing started we'll uh, kind of walk you through what's going on all right, so like I said, what you have in the box, we had a couple of uh, instruction manuals. One is keeping the life in your pump. So this has some, some recommendations on how to uh, you know fix it or how to diagnose problems. That's good. And then you got your general instruction manual, and it's got a lot of really good information in it about you know how high the oil level needs to be and, and changing oil and all that kind of stuff, the operation. In general, just for setting it up, uh, the main thing that we need to do is we need to add oil to it and then basically just connect it to our vacuum chamber uh, through the vacuum port, plug it in and get going. I mean, it's very simple. So here's the oil fill. Basically just unscrew that and pour your oil in. Now again, they gave me a, this, this pump came with a, a, a quart of vacuum pump oil. This is the JB brand. So obviously it's gonna work with it. Nice little easy distribution cap. So we'll get that going. Now I wanna, focus your attention on this thing. This is the oil fill level and you can see there's two lines. Basically, you wanna have your oil level above midpoint. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be looking at. We'll fill it up, I'll get a good camera angle so you can watch this thing being filled up. Um, first step is just get oil in there. All right, so we have our oil level above the midpoint there. We're good to go there. Capped it off. Now, the only other things that you need to be concerned with uh, to get started, this is where you're gonna connect your vacuum hose to the vacuum pump. And then obviously here's the plug. Now on the back of this, that's the on off switch. So those are the main things that you need to be concerned about. The only other thing that I wanna point out, this is the oil drain plug. You're gonna have to change the oil uh, every once in a while. Uh, if water gets in here or if it starts looking kind of gross, Definitely you'll want to change it. Um, you can do it maybe every couple cycles um, But for the most part as long as your oil looks, you know new then you don't really need to change it. It should be fine Okay, so next thing let's get our vacuum line hooked up now This came with my turn text chamber uh, and that's one of the reasons I like turn text It's basically turnkey out of the box ready to go. So we have our quarter inch compression fitting uh, ready to go that'll fit onto this smaller uh, barb thing. Uh, they're compression fittings, so you should be pretty good without using tape and all that stuff. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to add a little anaerobic sealant just to kind of add some security to make sure that we don't get any, uh, you know, leaks or anything like that. You want to have good solid vacuum. Uh, you could add a little bit of tape if you wanted on this just to kind of add some, you know, a little bit of extra security to make sure you have no leaks. The thing is, if you do have leaks, you're not going to get as well stabilized materials. Uh, that's going to be the you know the problem you run into. So I'm just going to kind of thread that on and back. I'll have links to where you can get this stuff on uh, down in the show notes. Okay. Now, for anybody that hasn't seen all this stuff hooked up, so for we, what we hooked into the, the vacuum pump, on this end, that's just going to plug right into your chamber. And at this point, all we have to do is load up our chamber with our, our wood or whatever material, uh, cactus juice, plug in our, our pump, and let it rip.
that's all there is to it. I mean, really add oil, you know, connect your hose and then plug it in and you're ready to go. And uh, that's how the, the Robin Air is also. Uh, you know, all these pumps are pretty much the same. I would say that the only things that could complicate this a little bit are sometimes maybe you don't have the right fittings and, and you know, if you're not using the Turntex chambers that come fully set up, you know, you might have a little bit of plumbing to do to get things connected up. Uh, but, you know, if you go with the Turntex and go with this pump, you know, there's only like three steps. Uh, and I don't even know if I would consider plugging it in and turning it on a step, really. Uh, set up is add oil and, and connect your, your pump to the, to the chamber. So I know this was kind of a simple video, but I hope that this helps out. I know that there are a lot of people that are thinking about getting into stabilizing, uh, maybe just doing a little bit of research. And something as simple as what is really involved with setting up your pump and getting it connected to your chamber, you know, is maybe a big question. So I hope this helps you out if you're thinking about getting into it. Now, I still run my Robin Air pumps and I'm going to be using those as well. Uh, and I had no need to buy the uh, like a different, you know, pump. I actually have two Robin Air pumps already. They do the job nicely. Basically, I wanted to get this JB Eliminator pump so that I had experience with these. And so I could say, you know, this is how it works compared to the Robin Airs. So far right now, I just, in general, I kind of know how they work. I know the specs and they cost more and they're repairable. That's, that's all I can really say about it. So I want to use this and, and put it through its paces a little bit. See, see what the deal is. Is it, you know, better? Am I getting any better results uh, compared to the Robin Airs for, for a little bit more money or not? For people out there that uh, have a, a pretty low budget but want to get into this, the Robin Air pumps work just fine, you know, and they're about 115 bucks. Um, uh, this one was about 300. Again, I'll have links to both of the pumps, the Robin Air and the JB Eliminator down in the show notes, as well as links to the chamber and anything else that I used. Uh, another one that's good to, to link up. I added a little anaerobic sealant to this joint. I don't know that it's really necessary. It's a little, maybe a little overkill uh, because it is a compression fitting. You really shouldn't get leaks, but this will just double check and, and, and ensure that I get no leaks at this uh, plumbing joint. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions like, you know, what do I need to get started? How does it all work? Which resin should I use? It'll help you get over that initial learning curve so you can get in your shop and start making some resin cast projects of your own. So uh, it's available on my website if you're interested in that. Uh, I guess until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting. Happy casting.